Hi, welcome everybody to my latest YouTube video. Whether you're a record collector, a Beatles fanatic, part of the VC, or just a YouTube uh, YouTuber, you're all welcome on my little channel. Uh, today we're doing something really special. We're going to be unboxing something uh, that is very, very special, to be honest. So I'm going to have to put my glasses on. Um, please try and stay to the end of this video because I'm not quite sure how long it will be. Uh, I don't know if it's going to be a quick video or a long video or something in between. Um, but I have ordered this um, and it's actually come back. I didn't actually order it till about Thursday. I think it was Thursday. So this is it. Uh, it's Sunday in the UK and this actually came today uh, with DPD, which is like a courier firm. Um, it's very very special and it's a very very limited edition uh, if you're Beatles fanatic like me excuse me I'll just try and open this yeah if you're Beatles fanatic like me this is something that you probably could do with getting um, the only thing is it's a very very limited edition um, um, if you're into your original UK Beatles records, whether that is singles, LPs, EPs, whether it's on Parlophone, Apple, Polydor. I think there's even some reissues in this. It's something that, you, you know, if you are really, really serious about collecting Beatles original UK records, um, you know, this is something that you might want to try and get someday. Um, I have had a couple of um, inboxes and people have like said, Beetle Dave, why haven't you put on what you got on Record Store Day? Well, there's a couple of reasons why. One, I was at work and two, I didn't buy anything and three, I've just got married. So, you know, I've got to be a little bit careful with what I'm doing with my money at the minute. Uh, there was a couple of things that I was interested in getting, but the one thing that I really wanted was the John Lennon um was it a nine nine ten inch like ep box set thing of give me some truth but it was going for really really silly money and like i said this is very very well packaged actually and like i say you know it was nothing really new apart from it being on white vinyl uh that's not to say that i won't ever get it if i see it for a really really nice price but i haven't had a chance to go to my local record shop that I use when I'm, you know, in Derby. Um, so, and this is the other reason why I didn't get anything, because I thought, really, you know, I've always needed something like this. Now, but this is, this is really, really hard to get into. You know, there's so much you can learn on the internet and things like that. But if the internet ever goes down or your computer breaks like mine has just lately, and we we'll just fit this open, uh, then what, what do you do? Well, you do what we used to do in the olden days. You get a book or you read a book and you learn from a book. Um, so this book was quite expensive, to be honest. Um, Right, so the chap that actually has wrote this book has left me a little message and has put for checklist and updates on the supplementary singles chapter and the forthcoming EP book, please visit appcore.net doc success. Dave, kind, kindest regards, Rich. I don't know if you can see that. So he's actually signed that. Um, this book is actually very very heavy and it's called Made in the UK a complete overview of the Beatles sing singles manufactured in the UK uh, by Richard Noller so this is it um, 
so I think this is like if you want to if you've got like me you've got quite a few different versions of Beatles singles if you look at this you will actually be able to tell the exact pressing and then if you want to buy and sell records like what some people do and I'm still a bit like that when you're doing the description you'll know exactly what pressing it is so you know it's worth having in that way I thought this was with the um Oh wow. Made in the UK, complete overview of the Beatles singles manufactured in the UK. Uh, and it's on, it's AppCore Books, which is a bit strange, isn't it? So I don't think, so whether this is something to do with, I don't know. Uh, it's actually signed it for me as well, kindly. Just there, look. All the best, Rich. First published in the Netherlands in 2022 by Apcor Books. Doing with Netherlands. Text copyright 2022. Design copyright Apcor Books 2022. www.apcor.net. So what's that? Let's have a look. Right, so this starts off, you've got dedications, you've got an introduction, you've got record sales, you've even got a few values on this, you've got promos, it covers uh, run-out groove markings, barcodes, promotional items, company sleeves used for the Beatles singles, picture sleeves used for overseas and on Beatles singles. There's even a thing on the Percy Phillips recordings, uh, which is was that'll be the day and in spite of all danger, but that's actually the quarry man on a 78 RPM disc. There's an introduction for the 60s, it says part one is the 60s adventure. Um, introduction, it even has a bit on the My Bonnie Stroke the Saints by Tony Shared and the Beatles. Oh my god. Part two is acetates, demos and songs that they gave away. I'm going to be doing a hell of a lot of reading folks, I really am. I mean there's even a thing on here about Badge, which uh, George Harrison co-wrote with Eric Clapton, which was released as a single for Eric Clapton's band at the time, Cream. So, god, there is a hell of, hell of a lot of information in this book. A hell of a lot. Uh, part three is a journey into the known and the unknown. <laughs> Special orders, circular 1972 polo rings and the introduction of the EMI box logo. Matt Apple labels. God, the first major reissue campaign, the 1976 pressings. You know, there's a hell of a lot of information in this book. Uh, yesterday, I should have known better. Single, back in the USSR, Twist and Shout single. The Beatles Singles Collection World Records Box Set 24 Discs Edition 1977. You've also got the Beatles 45, 1962 to 70 Promotional Box Set 1976. You've got the Beatles 45s, 1962 to 1970 Shop Counter Display, 1976. Wow, there's a hell of a lot of things here. Twist and Shout, Falling in Love Again from the Star Club. The Beatles Live Flexi Disc. Oh my goodness, is it? I'm going to be reading this for weeks and weeks and weeks, folks. Uh, part four. Keeping the flame burning, the Beatles in the 21st century. Let it be CD single. Girl full on the hill, uh, fall on the hill, sorry. Love bonus tracks, iTunes exclusive. Right, so there is roughly 667 pages on this. Uh, and it is a very, very well designed book. Um, starts off with a little bit of an introduction. Uh, so this is from uh, Richard, 
the chap that's put this book together. I was born in Essex, England, 1963. When I was 13 years old, my sister gave me a bundle of beat-up 45s as a Christmas present. Amongst these were five or six by the Beatles. So that's how you got hooked onto the Beatles. I'm not going to read everything because that had met this a very, very long video. So the idea of this book is if you've got, I mean, the recent video I did on some Beatles singles had quite a few variations of She Loves You. Now, there's all original 1960s pressings, but according to this, I could find out what each one of those pressings are. Um, right. The polo. Um, pressings. Have you ever heard of them? Well, I actually know what they are now. If you actually look, you get the 45. It might be able to do it like this. So it will look, actually look like a polo. Not that. That there will actually look like a polo. That's a pure polo. And that's what your label will look like. See, I've learned something now. I'd heard of them, but I didn't really know what it meant. actually shows you what the factory sample not for sale stickers were like or manufacturers property not for sale so if you're seeing some things on ebay that make out they are these sort of things that is what the original ones look like or the proper ones look like i mean i'm only glancing through this book and you know you're seeing these as i'm seeing them and to be honest so far i'm quite amazed at some of the detail this is going into um it tells you about the fonts how they describe fonts because some some people say it's the so same so font and things like that uh the ballad of john and yoko with such markings i have a few copies of get back with kt stamped in the center copies of let it be export single have been seen with a KT tax code. We've been on about tax codes, haven't we? Uh, however, in this in instant, the disc is so rare that the presence of a tax code is of no significance anyway. All right. A stock copy of Let It Be with a tax code is also confirmed, but these are very, very rare. See let it be in the body of this book so there is a hell of a lot of things it's stuff about what is in the run out um you know the dead wax It tells you what to look at, right? So if you're looking at a Beatles single, right, you've got to look at, th at the nine o'clock position, there'll be a marking. And at the three o'clock position, there'll be a marking. And then at the six o'clock position, there should be the like number of the record. Like in this case, it's I want to hold your hand. So it's six o'clock, it, it would say 7XCE17559. So that would mean it's an original one. Um, the, the nine o'clock position, the mother number number three. Often tax codes are seen here, right? And then at the three o'clock position is a stamp at O letter. Person have numbers. Barcodes. God almighty. Promotional items. Parlour phone. Ah, right. So in early 19... 63 or like or late 1962 if it was a promo or an advanced um copy it would come in a blue one like that now i've seen those and then those there which i thought were later ones because they look quite psychedelic were actually used from july 1960 to around october 
and they was the the, the original red, red label copies of Love Me Do would have been in one of those. God. Oh my word, there's thousands, there's loads and loads. It's going to take me about a month to read this, at least. And then some of the parlour phones, they had like little parlophone sleeves for the singles, had little stories on them, or in some cases, even advertising LPs. So that tells you about them. It basically tells you about every parlour phone design. That, that was in use in the 60s. I've got to be very careful because I don't want to open the book too too much. Wow. This is that this is this is worth every penny. I will tell you how much it cost at the end of this as well. Um Apple so some had glosses, glosses sleeves, some weren't, weren't glosses, some had a wavy sleeve. Picture sleeves used overseas, like I said before, in the UK we never got to original picture sleeves for Beatles singles, which was Strawberry Fields Forever, Stroke Penny Lane and Let It Be. That'll be the day, see it does even say things about the most valuable Beatles related item ever. That. Recorded by P.H. Phillips Kensington. In spite of all danger, McCartney Harrison. And then on the B side or the other side was that'll be the day. Holly Petty. Because originally there was only ever one of those made and the quarry men used to like you could have it for so many weeks or something, then the next person was supposed to have it, and you know. Um, don't be fooled, by the way. There was somebody on eBay the other week trying to sell one of these, and basically was it was a reproduction of the label on a seventy-eight. Ideal for framing, they said, which it was. Um, but you know, if you didn't read it properly, you might have thought you was getting the real thing. And don't get me wrong, it wasn't a lot of money. It was, I think, it sold for like fifteen or eighteen pound in then. Because I was actually going to buy it to frame it and have it on the wall. Um, wow, 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 wow. So my Bonnie, when it was originally released. You could have a push out centre or a solid centre, which I didn't know about. Which are here. Very, there's a lot of detail in this book. There really is a lot of detail in this book. Uh, there's bits of memorabilia in it. Um, there's a bit about Mersey Beat newspaper. Something about Polydor, because of course the Beaklers were originally, you know, signed to Polydor as a backing band, weren't they, for Tony Sheridan? And it says on their fifth of January, but it doesn't release the fifth of January, but it doesn't actually say what what year. Congratulations to the Beatles on winning the poll for the second year. The great chart success with their first single, Love Me Do. Shows you the advanced promo of Love Me Do there, look. With Paul's name written wrong. McCart. Cart tree, isn't it? Red label versions of Love Me Do, which I still haven't got. I've got a reissue, but I haven't got the original one. They go for quite a bit of money, don't they? There's quite a few variations of them as well. But yeah, there's quite a few. Then it was released on black parlophone as well, and there's quite a few variations of that.
there's some really really nice photos in this thing honestly that's please please me demo and then the standard red issue there I won't go through everyone I'll just see if, what we can find um, there is lots and lots and lots in here for me to understand there really is um, I think I will be using this book every time I'm looking at a Beatles single to be honest and I've got a few singles aren't I, folks I want to hold your hand had a red uh, a demonstration label as well Dick James versions and ooh, goodness me Let's see if we can find something a bit later on ticket to ride I actually think they look quite nice though don't they the um, parlor phone demo labels that's for ticket to ride, so that would be the A side, and the B side would just be white like that. I think they look quite nice then. Lady Madonna in the light. Lady Madonna had a slightly different promo. It was white, uh, green with a white A on it. Look. That was in the light. Cool though, isn't it? So I'm learning things and I'm only just flicking through this book. God, there's loads on Hey Jude. Loads. Every time I'm looking at this, I'm seeing something different. Which is good, isn't it? Really is. There's quite there is a lot. <sighs> Hell of a lot on A Jude, to be honest. Pages on A Jude. Hey Jude UK export. Yeah. You can see that. Which I've got somewhere, but I think mine hasn't got the scent in it. It's got the same number, DP570. There's something on the Christmas flexes as well, which is quite nice. Get back on an apple uh, acetate. Yeah. I think this is going to be one of those books where I don't think you're going to be able to read it all at once. <laughs> I think it's going to be one of those where, say if you go to a record fair and you find a UK copy of Get Back, you if you go through all these you'll be able to find out exactly what copy you've got. And depending on what copy you've got, it depends on the value of it as well, doesn't it? If you was going to sell it. And then there's things like if it's got a KT tax code and things like that. The Beatles as nature intended get back is the Beatles new single. It's the first Beatles record which is as live as can be in this electronic age. <laughs> you see that there folks. <laughs> Ballad of John Yoko, very underrated song. And the Ballad of John Yoko, I, I always thought this didn't, didn't exist. But it didn't have an Apple demo, it had a Parlophone demo. Again, it's on a green label, Parlophone label, not Apple, with a white A, which is there. And I bet if you've got one of them in your collection, you could name your price for that. Quite a, cute, quite a few variations of that as well. Something come together again. 
had a Parlophone demonstration label, not Apple. It's very hard to do because this is a very, very hard book as well. Heavy book. Some fantastic pictures and lots and lots of information. Did you know Let It Be was released on a Parlophone label? With the number of PR5833. And if you don't believe me, there it is. I'm not sure if you've seen these pictures right, because they're actually quite glossy. And that's just part one and that goes on to page 274 part two acetates demos and songs they gave away hello little girl to the foremost misery kenny lynch actually did a version of misery which i never knew Kenny Lynch was a comedian, by the way, in the UK. He released that on the HMV label. Again, white and a big red A for the demo. Do you want to know a secret, Billy J. Crane? Wow, there's some really, really good stuff in here. I don't... I don't think I'm going to be able to do this book justice just by showing you pictures of it. I really don't. It's, I must have 50 Beatles reference books, probably more to be honest. And I've never been so impressed as I am with this. You know, it is showing you the, the photos, there's uh, little bits of writing, it's telling you what to look for for the pressings. Which makes me sound a bit like a nerd, doesn't it? But when you've been collecting Beatles records as long as I have, which is coming on to nearly 45 years now, and I've got, there's two boxes there, it's probably got 200 singles in. What my phone is on here, it's got another 200 singles in, at least, probably more, to be honest. And then there's a big box up there, like a massive shoe box, but oversized shoe box, which again has got the best part of 300. Beatles singles in uh, and they're all slightly different it sounds stupid if you just look at them basically then no they're not the parlophones on parlophone apples on apple and things like that but when you start to look at this you could, I could actually work out what pressings each one of them were whether I could ever sit down and, and have the time to do that I don't know but if I wanted to, I've got the information and the tool to do it now with this book. It does show you uh, not just Parlophone and Apple. There's Decca labels in here, Dick James labels. Because obviously not every, every song that the Beatles gave to somebody else was released on Parlophone, was it? Um, Silla Black, It's For You. That's, that's actually quite a nice song, isn't it? It's for you. Peter and Gordon. I don't know how to do this. They're just some of the various labels and demonstration labels. Uh, basically, that means a lot, the Beatles. That means a lot demo. That means a lot PJ Proby, de uh, demonstration record. That means a lot on Liberty. You know, Peter and Gordon, woman. Hell of a hell of a lot of stuff in here. All good stuff, though. Well, I think it is. Cat call. 
by Paul McCartney and that is done by the Chris Barber band in 1967 well technically shouldn't that have been credited to Lennon and McCartney Love in the Open Air from the film The Family Way Paul McCartney George Martin and his orchestra produced by Air London Some apple ones here, Sour Milk Sea, Dracula Max. All good stuff though, isn't it? It is all good stuff. Um, I don't honestly think I can do this justice uh, with the camera that I've got at the minute. Um, part three is a journey into the known and unknown. Basically, this is when they started re-releasing the Beatles songs in, well, basically from 1970 onwards. Um, so obviously, if you've got an, if it says EMI at the bottom of your single, you know it's a, a reissue of some kind. But even some of those can be worth more than the originals, believe it or not. Which is a bit daft, isn't it? Some very, very, very brilliant pictures and they're good pictures. And even some of the ones that have the EMI little box logo at the bottom might have factory sample not for sale on it. God, the list goes on and on and on folks, it really does. I think I'm very, very lucky to have this. And it is the sort of thing that I will be using a hell of a lot. Thousands. Thousands. Of pictures. It was 20 years ago today. Sergeant Pepper taught the band to play. See, when you get to the issues, that the ones that are on Apple are quite hard because they look identical, basically, to the originals. But now, I'd know what to look for looking at this. Although, to be honest, they still look the same to me. The wording man there, outer edge of the labels and everything is identical. I think the only difference is the colour of the labels are slightly different. Right, the Ballad of John and Yoko again, there. So what do, you, what do you think, folks? Would you use a book like this? Would you like a book like this? I think this is something that a lot of us Beatles fans have needed for a long time. Um, yes, I know in America you, you've had, you know, somebody that's like done them in separate parts until you do like... 19, I don't know, 1963 to 1965, 60, 60, 67, 67 to 70 sort of thing. But I don't think anybody in England's ever done it. He even does the picture discs on here. The infamous picture discs. See, that's always made me laugh, but you could get the Hey, hey Jude on a picture disc right but technically it was on parlophone because i had a parlophone logo there but then you get an apple insert <laughs> cassettes cassette singles cd singles who remembers them cd singles there's a hell of a lot on the beatles live um which is basically the Ham Hamburg tapes from the Star Club. Because um, there was quite a few singles released from that. And if, you could get it in a box set, which is also in here. So if you've got the box set, uh, which was released on 2nd of November 1988, and the catalogue number was Backtrack, T-A-B-O-K, 
1001. So that consisted of 15 singles. Yeah, and it's stuff like, I saw her standing there, which obviously isn't the version, and please, please me, it's a live version, with nothing shaking but the leaves on the tree, twist and shout, B-side fall in love again, ask me why, B-side Sheila, to know it is to love her, B-side hallelujah, like I love her so, so, you know, the sound quality on them isn't that good, to be honest, if it's anything like the LPs, but I've seen that go on, certain internet selling sites and it's always over 100 pounds and in here <laughs> it will actually show you what the labels are like on them up you see what i mean there's something for every sort of like thing that you could collect on the beatles in the uk um cassette singles the Beatles Singles Collection 3-inch CD. Who remembers them? Did you get them in America? We used to have to have an adapter when they did them in, in the UK. Otherwise, they won't play on your CD player. So that shows you all the label variations on there. The cassette singles. Did anybody actually buy cassette singles? I didn't. I used to buy cassettes at one time. I didn't ever buy cassette singles. That's come out on a few different occasions in different box sets with slightly different covers. The Beatles Singles Collection 5 inch CD. It's amazing, it really is amazing. Like I say, I can't do it justice, I really cannot do it justice. Um, Now, what we're going to look at now. It's got fears of bird and stuff like that. When It's even got, back in the USSR and Twist and Shout, which was released by Parlophone in the UK in 1978, I think it was, or 1976, something like that. Now in the UK, it was originally on a black and silver paper label, but there's even injection moulded versions of it. Which, again, I didn't really know existed. Fears a bird, baby it's you. I mean, they all... <laughs> They are all very, very similar, but they've all got slightly different things on them. If you know what you're looking for, then you'd know what person it is. Keeping the flame burning, the Beatles in the 21st century. See, there's one here, I've never heard of this one. It's the Beatles, Ticket to Ride and Dizzy Miss Lizzie. From Live at the Hollywood Bowl. Didn't even know that existed on a single, did you? Apparently it does. Although that is a French picture, uh, French picture sleeve. So, yeah, so it was in France. Let It Be Naked. Who's got the Let It Be Naked album? I did have it years ago. But you try and buy it now, and it, it, it's going for really, really stupid money. Got some of the American ones. Now look. Got some really, really weird things in there. Weird as in unusual, not weird as in horrible. More fan club things. 
then it goes into some of the like discs which was in the Beatles singles collection which was released in 2019 wasn't it um 22nd november 2019 now although it was the classed as the British singles which it was um the covers and the labels they did it from around the world didn't it which i actually thought was quite a good um idea but the only thing with that is i haven't got it <laughs> but if i was going to get it i know what to look for now again it, it's something i've always wanted but it's always slightly out of my reach and i've heard um conflicting reports about some of them because some of them some of the things i've seen on youtube reckon it sound really really nice and other people have said oh like my records have been warped and stuff all right so Try centers. So I didn't even know that the beat some of the Beatles stuff was on tri centers like this. There and there. What's one of the rarest UK Beatles singles you can get? And it wasn't really a Beatles single. It was the Beatles movie medley, right? But the B-side... Happy Just to Dance With You. There's a version here that's actually on a very, very light green label. Again never seen it didn't even know it existed so i'm learning things all the time with this uh it tells you if you get a single that was uh made in ireland the catalog number might be identical um but it will say ri republic of ireland which makes sense I really, really cannot do this justice. Can't I? Can't do it justice. I'm the worst. Hey Jude. <coughs> Even on the uh, later Apple singles, it will say, "Ah, oh, can you see it? I'll see it better on that one." Sorry, R I. And apparently, if the, from Ireland, if you get a Beatles single from Ireland, they were originally released on the green EMI sleeve. Which I never knew. All right, so this is the book. I can say a very, very, very heavyweight book. I can't phrase it enough, folks. I really, really cannot phrase it enough. I think this is one of them albums that I will, uh, books I will be going back to time and time and time again. Um, yes, it's the Beatles UK singles, but it does include EPs, cassette singles, CD singles. It doesn't. doesn't mention LPs unfortunately um, although maybe that's going to be the next book now I believe this is a very very limited run um, and you can only get it by going on the um, app core books website so it's www. Appcore 
dot net and that's if they've still got some left um, however I bought this directly from Richard the bloke that bought it uh, this was on eBay and it was actually slightly cheaper to buy it off eBay than it was to buy it off the official AppCore book site not a lot only a few pounds um, I know Andrew at Parlogram Auctions did mention this book briefly in one of his videos and I'm sure he said this there was only going to be like 3,000 of these ever printed um, if that's the case I'm extremely excited to have it I'm extremely, to be honest I don't care if there's 3,000 or 30,000 of these I love it just what I've seen in the past 40 odd minutes I love this book I know this is worth every penny of what I paid for it uh, yeah I didn't buy anything for record day because I knew this was coming so I, what I would have paid for records day record store day I paid on this book it wasn't cheap um, but I think this is one of those occasions where you're paying for the quality if you do buy this I don't think you will be disappointed um, like I say mine's signed um, by Richard so thank you very much Richard Nala for signing this book for me um, it doesn't say anywhere about how many there is printed which I would have thought it might have said you've got numbers so and so but that doesn't really matter does it a uh, hell of a lot of information in this like I say there's 600 and something pages um, I've only glanced through to show you picture covers and stuff like that as well and there is memorabilia in here um, I'm over the moon to have this do you want to know how much I paid for it folks well it's signed by the author isn't it which I don't think all of them are he did send me a thing because I said I might feature it in a video and he said, oh, yeah. he says, yeah, that's okay. Um, he says, and he said, I've signed the book. Um, Appcore. So is this part of Apple? I don't know. Um, if you're a Beatles fanatic like me, this is something you should have on your wish list. It is the most I've ever spent on a Beatles book, to be honest. It is the most I've ever spent on a Beatles book, but I think this is worth every penny. Uh, I can research any any single now that I buy <laughs> or the ones I've already got folks because I must have best part of a thousand Beatles singles multiple copies don't get me wrong I've got a thousand different ones I've got multiple copies but the majority of them are UK I've got some French ones and some German ones and stuff like that which aren't included in this but if you're a Beatles fanatic in the UK I will try and find this book if you can afford it like I say, it's not not cheap. I wasn't given this. I paid for it out of my own money. Uh, the book itself was £78. But look how thick it is. Look how heavy that is. I mean, it's hurt my arms just showing you the few pictures that I've shown you. But I think it is actually worth every penny. Um, and this will be something that I will be using again and again and again and again. I might not look at it every day, you know, don't get me wrong. But it's one of those things where I think this is one of those books where if ever you looking at it, you will find something different. I mean, look, it's got the fan club ones on it. You've got demos. You've got Apple acetates. You've got Polydor, what the Polydor label should look like. You know, a green parlophone there. Um, some of the later ones like that one there you know it's it's an amazing book to have if you collected Beatles singles from the UK you need this book it is the most exclusive atlas of images ever of the Beatles UK singles every label variation is explored in close detail showing both major and su supple differences. Buying this lavishly illustrated book will help you discover which Beatles singles you have 
and those you need to complete your collection you know uh, this book covers the period from 1958 to the present day and includes the hit singles flexi disc export singles acetates and more you are guaranteed to make many new discovers which i already have just glancing through it just as i did while researching this book folks if you love your beatles singles beatly tone you could probably do with this but i don't know if i don't know if you collect singles or not do you um it's a must have that's all i'll say if you if you collect beatles uk singles this is a must have so that you know i mean you might not care what persons you've got you know it's each to their own um but i think i mean look how thick that is look how thick it is heavy so yeah i'm delighted to have this book so thank you richard noller for signing the book for me thank you for going to the you know this must have took you years to research and write and i've you know i've only glanced at it and i'm amazed i'm absolutely amazed uh, yes i've been talking for nearly an hour but it's in one way i'm lost for words i love it i really really do love it should you buy it should you buy it again it's up to you i'm glad i've got it i'm glad i've got this so that i can research a lot of my records um like i say if you're not bothered would you buy? you know if you're not bothered about what version you've got are you going to bother with this book you'll still learn something from this book it's it even for research purposes you know this is a fantastic book it's the best book i've ever had that details the Beatles singles uh, not necessarily the recordings you know Mark Lewis and, and people like that have done that brilliant books don't get me wrong but this tells you every variation of every British UK Beatles single what more can be said I'm happy to have it yes it was a lot of money but when you think about it is it a lot of money you know I don't think much of this will be out on the internet put like that unless they might do something where you pay to do it it won't be on wikipedia and things like that i don't think so yeah it's back to the good old days of sticking your head in a book to learn something which we all used to do didn't we if you wanted to learn something years ago you had to read a book uh and now i've got the book so if anybody wants to know it, ask me who dave <laughs> I love it. Um, personally, I do think it is worth the money. Some people might say, God, you spent all that money on a book. Um, yeah, it's a lot of money. But I spend a lot of money on records. So, you know, it's each to the vein, isn't it then, day? I'm happy. As long as I'm happy, it doesn't matter. Uh, like I said, if you are into Beatles singles, especially the UK ones, I would highly recommend that you try and get one of these books because I don't think these will be around forever, folks. Um, so if you've liked what I've shown you, which is only a fraction of what's in this book, you need to go to the website, which was... I can't even remember what it was now. Uh, bear with one sec. You need to go to the website, which was... I can't find it now, folks. I can't find it. I'm looking the wrong place, aren't I? Yeah, you, it, right. You need to go to it's www.appcore.net, which is just there. Then, if you can see that, can you see that. I would highly recommend it to any Beatles fan or fanatic like me. This is something you're going to need. It's a reference book you will be going to over and over and over and over again so if you look at it that way it's worth its money it's like say so if, if you found out you got something a really really rare record that you didn't really know you had but you found out due to this book then you'd be happy wouldn't you or even if you're just curious as to know what pressings you've got you know i love it um i'm very very glad that i've got it once again thank you to 
Richard Noller. Uh, I think you've done a great a great job, mate. I honestly do think you've got you've done a fantastic job with this. Like I say, I've only flipped through it and I love it, so well done. Right, so <clears throat> I did say I didn't know how long this video was gonna go on, but I didn't think it'd gone this long. So if you stayed to the end, thank you very much. Um as always thank you to everybody that is subscribing. Leave me comments, leave me likes, you know, just leave me a like because that helps with the YouTube aneurysm thing and that will help promote the channel. Uh, and if you're not subscribed, please subscribe because it is free. And check out this book. Honestly, check this book out. Uh, yeah, it's a lot of money, but you get what you pay for. You honestly do get what you pay for with this. It's a high quality product. Um, you know. Some of the books that we've had in the recent Beatles box sets have been really, really nice and really, really well made. But this knocks the spots off them as far as I'm concerned. Really does. And if they are going to do a new singles box set, maybe they could do a super deluxe box set and have a book like this in with it. Get in touch with Richard. You never know, he might do it for you. <laughs> yeah, I'm very, very happy. Um that's going to take pride and place in my book collection to be honest so as always whatever you're doing please stay safe remember you are the beat and beetle dave without you this channel wouldn't exist i hope you've enjoyed this video i'm sorry if it's gone on a bit long but i just wanted to try and do justice to this fantastic book yes i know not everybody can afford to buy this book um but i don't think it's the sort of book you're going to find in a charity shop or anything like that. i think anybody that's got this book will keep it um and if you like your records and you know you want to know your person, I think that's a must. For me anyway. So until always, stay safe everybody. Peace and love, peace and love, peace and love. Thank you for watching my video. And I hope you've enjoyed it. Bye bye.